I'm going to show you the fundamentals of creating high quality AI generated images using the Midjourney website. First, you'll need to log into your account. Once inside, you'll see the explore page. This features the top images that other Midjourney users have been creating. The fastest way to start creating images is to go to the create page with this paintbrush icon. The prompt bar at the top of the page is where we can enter a text description for Midjourney to turn into an image. As an example, I'll create an animal illustration for a storybook and add a specific artist's name like John Klassen. I also want desaturated and dimmer colors, so let's also put that into the prompt. Every time you use a prompt bar, four variations of that image are generated, and it typically does a pretty good job of following the subject, style, and colors you asked for. Next to the image panel, you can rerun the prompt to get more variations. I'll usually do this a couple of times. You can also hide the image to clear up your workspace. This doesn't delete them permanently though. The use icon copies and pastes the prompt into the prompt bar again if you want to make any adjustments to it. Let's take a closer look at the prompt bar. On the right side is a settings menu. Inside we have a ton of options. You can change the image aspect ratio from portrait to landscape orientations. This can make a big difference in how the final images look. The aesthetics menu gives you control over the visual style of the pictures. Stylization applies Midjourney's creativity and artistic flair to the images. Be careful when turning this value up too high though. Using a very high stylized value tends to add a lot of the AI's flair to the images, and so it doesn't follow the original prompt as closely. Weirdness is a quirky parameter. It sort of just generates images that are weird and unique. I don't really use this because I want the pictures to follow my prompts, but it's worth testing out. Variety controls the variation in the images generated. A low variety value gives you much more reliable and repeatable results. A higher variety value will give you more unexpected results, and it's great for exploring Midjourney's visual library. Inside the model settings, you can choose between standard and raw mode. The images we've seen so far are all generated in standard mode. Raw mode is supposed to give a more direct interpretation of your prompt, without adding in any of Midjourney's automatic visual enhancements. Here are some icons for trees, and you'll notice that in raw mode, there isn't any 3D shape added to the icons. There's a bunch of different Midjourney versions available. As of recording this video, version 6 is the latest model, and it'll produce the best results. Personalize creates images tailor-made to your own specific style preferences. The AI figures out the visual style that you like the most and creates images in that style. My personalization code gives me nice golden colors and this really soft glowing effect. Your personalization will be different though. To teach Midjourney your personal style, go to the tasks page with the thumbs up button. You'll be ranking images from Midjourney. On every page, pick the one you prefer. And after you've ranked 200 images or so, Midjourney will have enough information to create a personal style for you. Right next to the image grids, you'll see these little boxes underneath the prompt. These are the parameters you used, so this row pictures has a stylization of a thousand and my personalization code. You can click on parameters to add them into the prompt box. The two dashes indicate you're using a parameter, and they're followed by the parameter name and value. So far, we've covered the basics of creating images through the prompt bar, but there's actually a lot we can do to manipulate the images after we've created them. If you hover over the pictures, the very subtle and very strong buttons appear. These create variations of that existing image. It's a useful tool if you have something that fits the visual style you like, but want to see a few more variations. Let's click on an image to check out the image menu. We've just seen the very subtle and very strong features. There's an upscaler which gives you 2K resolution. Upscale Subtle tries to keep the upscaled images as close to the original as possible, while Upscaled Creative will add minor changes and adjustments to try to improve the image or fix tiny mistakes. If we closely inspect this photo of a group of friends in a photo booth, there are some errors, the eyes look misaligned, and it's obvious it was AI generated. After using the Upscale Creative button, there's some improvement in how the eyes look. Most of the people in this photo look a lot more natural now. Rerun just runs a prompt again. We've already covered this. Reframe is what the pan and zoom features used to be. You can expand the image with this. The slider changes the aspect ratio, and you can move the original image around. The white rectangular borders show where the new image gets expanded. Next to that is a zoom feature, which pulls the camera back and adds more around the borders. 
I'm gonna use reframe to expand this photo to the right. The expanded region keeps the same visual style as the original image. It looks kind of empty though. So let's use this repaint feature, which is in painting, to adding a dragon. I'll select the region I want to in-paint with a lasso tool to the right of the knight, and in the prompt type, a huge dragon head. Midjourney fills in our selected region with the dragon that we prompted for, in the same visual style as the original photo. You can also use images as references to give Midjourney some additional clues on exactly what you want to create. Here's a painting of sunflowers. I can use the image icon to add it as an image reference into the prompt box. I'll add a prompt of cinematic steel of an anthropomorphic dog wearing a suit with a sunflower pattern on it. The dog wears a sun hat. There's a black background. In the resulting images, we do see the sunflowers from the reference photo, but I only want it on the dog's suit. I don't want the flowers to also be in the background and around him. So what I'll do instead is to generate images with the raw prompt without any image reference to get the plain black background. Back at the sunflower painting, I'll copy the image link. With the image reference copied, I'll use a repaint feature on the dog with a clean background and select the outline of the suit that I want the sunflower painting to be injected into. Finally, I'll paste in the image URL into the prompt bar below to use it as a reference. The generated images show the dog with a sunflower suit. It did not preserve the oil painting texture I wanted, but at least there is a clean background. You can also use images as style references. I've got a nice colorful image here and I want to transfer this visual aesthetic onto another image. So I'll select the use style feature to copy the image as a style reference into the prompt bar. Then prompt for the Eiffel Tower. Midjourney transfers the art style from the reference image onto the landmark. To check what type of image reference you're using, hover over the attached image and three icons will show up. The painting is for a regular image reference. The paperclip is for a style reference. But there's also this third character reference icon, which can help create multiple images of the same character. I've got a reference photo here of a man I made in Midjourney. Using this upload icon, I'll attach him as an image reference, and then make sure character reference is turned on. I'll try a prompt of photo of a man behind him are the pyramids at nighttime, shot on a Polaroid camera. This character reference feature works best with the images originally created in Midjourney, so it won't work as well with your own photos. You can right click for a shortcut to the image menu, which has all the features I showed you. And you can download individual pictures with save image. If you're in need of inspiration for what prompts to use, go to the explore page where images of other users will be shown to you. Scroll around and you'll find tons of different styles and content. You can copy over the prompts or use the images as references for your own work. One of the best things about the Midjourney website is how easy it is to organize everything. Go to the archive tab and you can access all the images you've ever created. There's tons of filter functions to display specific image types, whether you only want to see landscape images or you only want to see portrait images. And also make sure to take advantage of the view options to get the most convenient display. You can select multiple images by holding down shift and clicking and then hit download to save them all at the same time. As of recording this video, you'll need to have generated at least 100 images inside Midjourney's Discord server to be able to use the alpha website. To find out how many images you've created, type slash info into the Discord bot and your usage will be displayed. They are planning to roll out the website to more non-Discord users though. If you're new to Midjourney or if you're an experienced user and want a complete prompt guide to help bring your imagination to life, go and take a look at this video tutorial I made over here.